Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of previously unseen clips from this series of Would I Lie To You. Joining Lee Mack tonight, Alex Jones, Jim Carter, Bob Mortimer, Miranda Hart, Alexander Armstrong, Kate Humble, Miles Jupp, Diane Parrish, Dr. Christian Jessen, Armando Iannucci and Claire Balding. And joining David Mitchell tonight, Jack Whitehall, Richard Maidley, Gabby Logan, Greg Davis, Richard Osman, Mel Gedroich, Andy Hamilton, Chris Tarrant, Richard Bacon and Dale Winton. And so we begin with uh, round one, it's Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've got no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And Richard, you are first up. My family don't have a swear jar. We have a bore jar. <laughs> Whenever a maidly says something dull, they have to stick a quid in it. Blimey, have you got a change machine at home? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Lee? The, ma the maidly bore jar. Could it be true? Well, um, yeah, we'll go with true. <laughs> OK, are all the family members included in this? It's a compulsory family scheme, yeah. OK, and who would you say... We know the answer, but we'll ask it anyway. <laughs> who, would, who would you say has given the most to the jar? Well, me, obviously. You've given the most. Yeah. And what do you do with the money? Well, I keep it. You keep it? Yeah, so it's, my, it's my system and it's my jar. And, and, it's, it's, mostly, and it's mostly my money, so <laughs> I tend to keep so it. So, basically, yeah. it's a jar full of money that yeah. you've put in yeah. that you take all the money out and keep. That is so what? boring. Get a quid in it. <laughs> Is it only family member? If I came to your house and was just my usual self, would I have to start overloading it? Well, I mean, for example, if you came in and uh, started talking about not going out, obviously you'd have to put a quid in. <laughs> Trust me, if I was in your house, I wouldn't be talking about not going out. <laughs> Do you remember the last time you put up you, not, not poor Jack or Chloe or yeah. long-suffering Judy, yes. the last time that you put a pound in that jar, what was it for? I was reading something about fiscal policy out of the Financial Times, and Judy said after about three seconds, jar. <laughs> Maybe she was agreeing with you in German. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Lee Mack? Miles, I, I think this is true. Do you? Yeah, but I, I do find, I find Richard intrinsically uh, believable. <laughs> So you think Richard's telling the truth, Kate? I think it's complete rubbish. You think it's a lie? Yeah. I'm going to say not true. You're going to say it's a lie. Richard, are you telling the truth or are you telling a lie? Well, I'm afraid the answer is deeply boring. I lied. <laughs> Bob, you're next. I have a didgeridoo suspended from a tree in my back garden so that when the wind blows in a particular direction, it parps soothing sounds of the outback into my bedroom window. Uh, David's team, what do you think? Parps soothing sounds of the outback. <laughs> yes. What a, what a poetic way of putting it. Thank you. Do um, you genuinely believe that that particular instrument makes a parp? <laughs> How would you describe it, Greg? Mm. <laughs> 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 it's a sexy. And how soothed do you feel? <laughs> Greg, <we'll> stop popping. <laughs> you know, I, I get this every night in my house, please. <laughs> Where is it, Bob? It's in a tree. Yeah. And you've made a conscious decision to put it in the tree. Yeah. I thought you said it was hanging, hanging from, from a tree. tree. What it is, is it's trapped in a, a V. I was like, is there a name for that area of a tree? Is it called the Clooney it's, or something? It's, it's, it's called it's Clooney. <laughs> Clooney. <laughs> well, it's I believe George Clooney's older than Didgeridoo of a tree in his garden. Why don't you believe this? Well, <laughs> this part of your finger there is called the Clooney. Is it? So I'm assuming. I never knew. That's that. why I said Clo I know right. it's Clooney. Where, where, where it, and it's wedged there. It's wedged in the tree's V. Yes. <laughs> it's wedged, wedged horizontally in the tree's V, facing southeast, which is the prevailing wind where I live. Where do you live? Not Britain. Britain. No, well, the prevailing wind in Britain is southwesterly. It doesn't happen every night. Right. <laughs> So tell us what this sound does for you, then. You're lying in bed at night and you, you've had a lovely day, you're just settling down, and you hear... And then what, what sort of... What, what happens to you? I'm soothed. 
<laughs> and the mind is soothed. Do you know you get things that do, will do the same thing to, say, your throat? Yes. That does it to the mind. What if your brain's fine? You don't want to hear that every time it's windy. You're always soothing your brain. That's what sleep is. Don't hence that, hence the success of the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, though, Bob, I've been led to believe by uh, out-of-work hippies mm. over the years that the didgeridoo is an incredibly difficult instrument to play, yeah. and yet it would appear that all one has to do is to pass air through it. <laughs> no, well, you have to position it correctly, just as you would have to over your mouth. I've done that by utilising the Clooney. <laughs> the tree. You're but using the Clooney the tree as human lips. <laughs> Even to get any kind of noise that we're didgeridoo, the Clooney, which doesn't exist, on Bob's tree, um, <laughs> would, would have to be flashlight because uh, uh, Aboriginal doesn't said. just go. Because <gasps> it's not just wind; they use their lips. Very good point. Very good point. <laughs> just coming up this time of year, I admit it's a lot better. In fact, it, it, I have a wisteria that grows through the didgeridoo. <laughs> Wisteria comes into leaf. Yeah. Not only yeah. does it pipe the wind towards yeah. the didgeridoo, but it acts as the lips. <laughs> it's long been said that <laughs> if the wind blows in the right direction through wisteria, it can ah. play any instrument in the world. <laughs> it's time yeah, to decide, David. <laughs> OK, we need to make a guess. What are you going to say? Um, I think it's a lie. Of course it's a lie. We think it's a lie. I think it's a lie, well... Uh, Bob, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, you're next. For a prank, I once set a friend's legs in plaster casts while he slept. <laughs> David Mitchell's team. Do you get to take those kinds of materials home with you then when you're at medical school or when you're... Um... We're not supposed to. Right. Were you at medical but school? We at the do. Time? This would have been. Did you yes. say was he at medical school? At the time. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am not. I thought you were accusing him. <laughs> Christian, why why did you play this prank on your friend? Because he'd got blind drunk, as only medical students can do. And he was drunk as you were putting the plaster cast on him. He'd or... actually passed out by that stage. <laughs> right. And was, was sleeping. It... Can what... you get struck off for this? No. All oh, right. <laughs> Anyway. Presumably, you had to have mm. a plan, didn't you? You didn't just happen to chance upon the plaster casting equipment. Um, we decided we were going to plaster him from his ankles right. all the way up to his hips, with his legs apart like that. And you never woke up the whole time you're touching him, and presumably right the way up to the top of his groin. Have you ever drunk 19 pints of cider? Yes. All right. <laughs> Did you first take his trousers down? We did, yeah. Oh, the, the humiliation. <laughs> did you take and his dignity. underpants off as well? No, we left the undies on. And you said we. Who were the accomplices here? I had mates that were involved. Right, Name okay. them. Matthew, Mark... Luke and John. <laughs> Is that, is that the gospel now, or are you picking this up? Gospel. Gospel. <laughs> and of course, Andy, really... did you miss that? I said, is that the gospel? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I didn't miss it, right. <laughs> And when he woke up, what was his reaction? He thought he'd had a stroke. Because he couldn't... He couldn't move his legs. That's oh, very bad self-diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> David, what are you thinking? Um, yeah. Andy? I think the medical student thing, knowing how their minds work, I, I think it might be true. And you're edging towards...? I did think it was a lie, and now I think it might be true. OK, we'll, we'll say it's, uh, it, it's true. So it's true. All right. Dr Christian, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is true. Yeah. <laughs> Xander, you're next. Last year, I was amused to discover that in one weekend, I'd had a curry with Andy Murray, been bowling with J.K. Rowling... <laughs> ..and attended an odd party with Todd Carty. <laughs> David, what, what, what do you well, think? what a weekend that was. <laughs> what was odd about the party? Where do I begin? 
the first indication that it was an odd party, there were chicken wings that were brought around, for example, that everybody dived on. And um, it was only when we'd eaten a, a, most of the plate when suddenly went, mmm, mmm. Mm, then this is still quite red. And we all noticed that actually that nothing had really been cooked <laughs> at all. So we were all, uh, we were all dicing with salmonella. Um, there was a, a, a husband and wife there who had the most enormous row. It was just, it was, it was a very odd. So a row and disappointing food. Yes, disappointing food. This, this is a normal food. party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. fascinated with the bowling with rolling. Was it the sort of bowling which ladies of a certain age in white do in parks? No. Or so was it ten pin, three fingers in the old... Ten pin, and three oh. fingers, yes. Ten pin and three fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to change from your normal shoes you bet. into the red, white and blue yeah. sort of comedy bowling no, shoes? No, we had, we had purple shoes. This was the livery of this rather chic it was posh. Uh, bowling place. Where was the shoes. chic bowling place? The yeah. chic bowling yeah. place is in London's Bayswater. Oh, I've been oh, there. Are yeah. yeah. oh, the yeah. shoes so purple? Oh, that's where J.K. Rowling goes. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 The rowling alley. As What's they... Joe... What... <laughs> Let's come back yeah. to Murray... And curry. curry. We were in this rather large curry house in, in Milton Keynes. <laughs> Milton Keynes! <laughs> <laughs> Why were you in Milton Keynes in a yes. large curry house exactly. with, with Andy Murray? Yeah. Exactly. It was, it was a charity event. After which we went, we repaired to a, a sort of mini Taj Mahal building in Milton Keynes. Mm -hmm. At another table, though, three people who'd been sitting there for quite a long time we hadn't noticed, eventually we spotted were Andy Murray. Mrs. Murray, and uh, and someone who I can only imagine is, was his agent. And uh, right. we, uh, after a little while, obviously felt we'd better go and tell him he was Andy Murray. Is, is well, you went and talked to him. <laughs> well, we, only to tell him he was Andy Murray. <laughs> so what are you going to say, well, David? Is I'm this true? Duck, you see. What do you think, Chris? Well, he's just got a little shifty little face, hasn't he? <laughs> so you think basically it's a lie? I think basically it's a lie. You know, Zander's a man about town. He's quite hello. You know, I can imagine him in the purple. <laughs> you know, I can imagine him in the purple bowling shoes and and the you know the mm. Andy Murray. I can imagine that. It, at a party with uncooked chicken wings and Todd Carty, I I can't. I don't know. I think it's probably a lie. It's saying it's a lie. Zander, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? Well, it is in fact a lie. No! <laughs> It's David. Once a week, I love to eat a full English breakfast, but can only do so if I'm entirely stripped to the waist. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's team, what do you think? Hmm. Once a week, you say? Yeah. Any particular day of the week? I, at the weekend, usually a Saturday or a Sunday. Do you know what the weekend is, David? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you cook it, mate? Do you cook it in that state of undress? Or do you get undressed once it's cooked? I, 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 get, I get undressed once it's cooked. <laughs> but, you know, only... only I mean, it's, it's, there's a limit to the amount of undressing required. I mean, I, I take my top off. Boxers or...? No, it's... it's I think it's I, waist up, I think. I, it's I, waist I, up? Yeah, that's the... Yes. Waist up, yes. It would be odd if he, if he had a breakfast... <laughs> but you, from the waist down, he's stripped naked. That would be odd if he went round to his house and said, mm. thank you, David, for the sausage and beans. We're not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's... Get them off! Yeah. <laughs> and none of you are going to ask why. I am about to ask. Oh, good. <laughs> what on God's earth function does taking your top off play in this breakfast? In many ways, I've, I've lost a lot of self-respect. You have. Many years, and sometimes I like to wallow in that. <laughs> in that case, we think it's true. <laughs> I do find there's a certain amount of splatter involved in in the eating of a, of a full Is this English. getting sexual? <laughs> N not from my body. Yeah. <laughs> Is this on your own or would someone join you? I would more usually on my own. <laughs> I, I would Would you like someone to join you? I don't think so. Really. I'm not offering <laughs> it. Can I can I ask you a question, Gabby? Do you like a fried breakfast? <laughs> David, is, is this... I'm Sorry. <laughs> is this for practical reasons? Is it, is, as you say, just oh, yeah. to stop the splashing? Or yeah. is it a lovely sense of liberation? 
I think it's partly practical, partly, yes, of course, you feel closer to nature. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? What are you going to say? Is he telling the truth here? Christy, what do you think? Do you eat with your clothes on? I do, I do. So you don't strip off for any reason to do with eating? No, not really. Do you think he does? <laughs> Having got to know David during the course of this evening, <laughs> I rather suspect he does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Diane, do you... Do what? No, I do not. No, no I'm... I'm oh, sorry. I was going to say, do you believe it? <laughs> I was going to say, do you believe it? I wasn't <laughs> taking the opportunity to go, do you have fry? I'm sure to come round my house when you take the top off. I wasn't going to say that. No, I was thinking it. I was absolutely thinking that. <laughs> I've never said it out loud, but now you've brought it up. <laughs> do you want to come round on Sunday? <laughs> I've, I've got burnt out potato and waffles. <laughs> David is, is telling the truth, or I, do you...? I think he's telling the truth. I think David, David's a well-brought up, educated chap. Yes, He'd never no, do he anything never. quite so stupid. Yeah, but, yeah, but so it's not true. Tie. It's not true. I'm, I'm, I'm on lie now. Yeah. OK, we have to go with lie, then. You're going to say lie. David, truth or lie? Please don't be true. It is a lie. Thank you. God. <laughs> Next, it's uh, Jim. Uh, after being knocked unconscious by a frisbee for three days, I could only speak in a thick Scottish accent. <laughs> David's team. Oh, a bit harsh, that. Just because you're Scottish doesn't mean you're thick, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so, wh what was the occasion of being hit by the frisbee? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was playing with uh, my daughter and her friends, and sort of playing frisbee, you know, yeah. with, with a bunch of people and this young lad just let it go, and it just caught me right on the side of the head. Uh, did he pass out first? Well, I would... Uh, no, no, well, I don't know, really. I went sort of strange and a bit... I had to sit down, but I don't think I physic physically... You sort of say so you sat down, feeling a bit so dizzy, head, head you sat down, and at some point someone asked, e e how are you feeling, yeah, yeah. and you found yourself so, answering... I think I said, I'll tack the high road and you tack the low road, and I'll... And, and that was... And, was it just the voice, or for the next three days did you not eat lettuce and loathe the English as well? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> some yeah. of us do eat lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, in fact, I, I, went, to, I went up to the... Um, the accident and emergency, and somebody there, when they met me and was convinced by my wife who took me there, that I wasn't Scottish, said, she tried to calm me down and said, it will go away. <laughs> Your wife needs to be there to persuade, just to say, sorry, he's not really Scottish. Because <laughs> they, they get a lot of people who aren't just Scottish but want to be cured. <laughs> Frisbees are dangerous things. I took my son out, my older son, when he was about five or six, to a, a field area, a field, and I said... <laughs> I said, stand there, we are going to enjoy the frisbee. So he stood <laughs> over there. I wish you were my dad. And I... <laughs> what I hadn't told him was that he was meant to catch the frisbee. So he stood there, full of the trust of a trusting son like that, <laughs> And I did a great throw. I str you know when you straighten the arm? So it goes... And it went... And he looked at it with a lovely, innocent face. And it went... Bang! There. And blood went... And the shock on his face that his father had done this to him. He said, what the hell have you done, you idiot? So what are you thinking, David? Well, I, oh, totally true. Well, I, I, well I've, uh, this is my concern. Uh, Jim has very reasonably been reticent about doing a Scottish accent in this bit of the game. Yeah. I suspect, and maybe I'm wrong, and Jim can prove me wrong, or otherwise, but I don't think that he necessarily does a very convincing Scottish accent. Ooh. Jim Ooh. Carter can't do a Scottish accent. Well, because lots of people can't do various accents. Lots of very good actors can't do certain accents. And I think it would be unlikely that the accent you'd get if concussed would be one that you couldn't previously do. Disagree with that entirely. Do you? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, get your own team. <laughs> Just give us a little taste of this voice, if you can use no. the great act... Use your tool, your great actor's tool, tool yes, I judge to, to give us a little bit of this voice. I don't, I don't feel very well. I think I'm a bit... Uh, a bit woozy. <laughs> That's lovely, isn't it? It's Radio 4, it's Saturday afternoon, it's a play. All right, so, David, truth or lie, what are you going to say? Um, what do you think? I think it's true. You think it's true? I'll take the hit. I think it might be true. 
Well, OK, I think we're going to say it's true, then. Jim Carter, were you telling the truth or were you lying? Uh, I was telling a lie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, next. It's Lee. I got stuck for half an hour in a men's toilet because I couldn't find the door. <laughs> so where was this men's toilet? Next to the ladies. <laughs> Were you on your own? Uh, yes. <laughs> and where Apart was this? from somebody singing some wham song, I don't know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> and where was this ladies' toilet that it was next to? Uh, it was in the place I worked at, which was Bingo Hall. And you, so, presumably, you managed to find the door on the way in? No. <laughs> <laughs> Without being facetious. Right. Oh, I didn't do that. You found, you found the door... You found I stood the door. up. <laughs> <laughs> you found the door on the way in. I did find the door on the way in. You took a... number one, number two? Uh, no, I, I walked. I didn't get a bus. <laughs> You've popped into the toilet. Yes. It doesn't really matter what you've gone to do. Well, I think what does matter is whether or not he'd gone into a cubicle or was just approaching a urinal. Yes, that's a good question. And how long it took you, right. given you just walked through the door that then you couldn't find. Walked in the door, I went to the urinal. Yeah. The door closed, and then I'm now stuck in that toilet for half an hour. Why, was it, why, why was it that you couldn't find the door once it had closed? Because I went in... And it was late at night, and the, the building had started to shut down, and, and so I went in, and, and, and just as I got to the urinal, the last bit of the door closes, and it's now as pitch black as you can possibly imagine. The other bits of the story I've not mentioned is that I was absolutely hammered, <laughs> and so, so I started getting a bit confused. I went back to what I thought was the middle of the room. I'm drunk, but now I've lost all bearings. <laughs> <laughs> and so I felt I wish, my... I really wish this was on infrared somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Uh, there was a guy with a video camera, the wham guy. Uh, on <laughs> I eventually, uh, a door opened, because someone came looking for me, and as the door opened, I realised I'd lost my bearings so much that... I just... Every time I'd gone round, I'd missed the door. <laughs> I think um, that this is true. Oh, you really? think it's true? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. I think it's where he worked. And I think there's going to be some light bleeding around the door, isn't it? Do you yeah. think... You don't think it's true? No, but if you both do. It's uh, definitely unlikely, but all the things are unlikely. You think it's unlikely? <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I don't know. I just think it's true. And I, and I think it's well told if it isn't. All right, so it's true. Yeah. OK. Uh, Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> To win a bet, I presented a three-minute piece to camera live from Royal Ascot in a full-length evening gown with Willie Carson concealed beneath my skirts. <laughs> mm. <laughs> For people that aren't sure, here, here's a picture. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Whose idea was the bet? The director. We've come off air. I put on the long ball gown. Willie waits. He stands on a box when he's presenting with me normally. Obviously, to fit under my skirts, he didn't. In fact, he knelt and he was quiet as a mouse. He was very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one said it yet. I wanted to say it. What, sorry, no. <laughs> what did she say? I, I know wanted what to said. say there was a Willie under her skirt. <laughs> Rob, it's love, now it's I, out there. I'd like to request there. someone more mature on my team. <laughs> I mean, I know Willie Carson is not a burly man. No, he's very but, smart. But I would still think... Would, that's, that must be quite a substantial it dress. Was, it was a very... You know, like, like... As you sometimes get in costume dramas, it didn't have the hoops, but it had a very full skirt. But how, how did he get in, though? Did, did you... Did, well, you stood there, did you I go... I stood. Come on, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> he crawled along on the ground and then knelt. Under there, and it's a three-minute piece, so the first two minutes was absolutely fine, and yeah. on I went and rattled on about normal racing stuff. And then he started to giggle, and that's what gave it away, but because we got two of the three minutes, the bet was one. Recreate the piece to camera. OK, so I stand there and I say hello and welcome to Royal Ascot. We've had a stunning first day here with a win for Frankie Dottori. We saw his flying dismount, and then there's first squeak then from Willie. He goes, because <laughs> he's got a very high laugh, <laughs> and I, like, smacked him, and so just... <laughs> <laughs> Is this, why, is this why Channel 4 have got the horse race? <laughs> right, David, what do you think? What do you think, Dale? Do you know, I'm really beginning to believe that 
she'd have done it for a prank. I think it was an excellent acting performance, but I believe it to be a lie. Oh, you see, now I have to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a lie. You think it's I a think lie? That's a, yeah, that's fine. OK. Yeah. Uh, Claire, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was telling the... It was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's me. I recently had to be rescued by supermarket staff after I fell into the chest freezer trying, <laughs> trying to reach the last packet of Yorkshire puddings. So you've fallen in. Yes. Talk us through the next bit. But, but imagine, right? Imagine that this... Imagine this... This, this is the freezer, OK? Yeah, right. So I am here. And I, I'm looking, and I'm looking around. There's, there's nobody. So I just, ah yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going like that, and I'm, and I'm going like that, yeah. and I'm going, <laughs> and I'm going, <laughs> and I'm in, and I'm like that, and I, and I hit my hand on the sh kind of sharp inner edge. Right. And I went, and I, and first of all, I went, ah, and people, people so kind of... So you just stay lying down? Well, I was shocked, Lee. <laughs> and and I, as I, I looked, my little head peeped up <laughs> over the top, and some people, some Welsh people, because it was Cardiff, came over and said, are you all right? <laughs> so, and they, they kind of, you know, I, I could have got out, but they sort of helped me up, and, you know, I think they were worried I was going to make a claim. <laughs> <laughs> were you... Were you tempted to stay in there until <laughs> someone came to get something to go, ah! <laughs> yeah. so, what, so what do you think? The bit of the story I don't think is true mm. is the bit when he started talking <laughs> <laughs> up until the point when he just stopped talking yeah. then. Yeah. It's, the f it's the fact that he sort of went, ooh. <laughs> I can't get up. I'm rock brave. Well, that's not, that's not strictly what I said. I said I would looked at my hand with shock and then somebody ran over straight away. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think it would take that long for attention to be... There, there would have been a sort of frubadum <laughs> kind true. of noise <laughs> and people would have looked around and noticed that the small that's man not... who'd previously been there well, had somehow yeah. disappeared. I and thought... they naturally have wondered where he may have gone to. <laughs> oh, I think it's true. Yeah, I think it's true. Because yeah, it's quite yeah. a humiliating story, and I don't see why you tell it unless it was true. Uh, the format of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't um, see why you tell it if it wasn't true. <laughs> Andy, I really think you've been missing something this evening. <laughs> So, David, what are you saying, given I what think we think Poirot has said? Yeah. I think we think it's true. You think it's true? Yeah. Yeah. You think it's a lie? Well, I can tell you it is... ..a lie. Oh. Oh. Well, that's all we've got time for on this special edition of Would I Lie To You. Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>